In the early 21st century on an alternate Earth, it's discovered that 4% of the population have special abilities. The government names them powers and asks them to register their abilities to keep an eye on them. At first they're very popular in the workforce, but after the third industrial revolution, all powers become poor and persecuted by the police. Soon a crime syndicate begins illegally selling an upper known as psych, which is made from the spinal fluid of traffic powers. In response, the police start using huge drones and special robots called guardians to track them down. A powered man named Connor has the ability to use electricity and uses it to do temporary construction jobs while looking for something more permanent. Soon after he gets a gig at a construction site, the police come by to make sure no powers are being used. All the workers are lined up and asked to look at the sky so the drone can scan them, allowing them to discover which workers have powers. The cops tell the powers to leave and get a permit before they discover there's a warrant for one of the guys. The police try to arrest him, so the man shoots fire at them to try to escape. At that moment the drone drops a few guardians, who immediately shoot the guy to death. Meanwhile another police squad is raiding a powered man's apartment. When a guardian brings the door down, the man uses his super strength to throw a disc at it, breaking its neck. Then the man tries to escape through the window, but Officer Park comes in and makes him stop at gunpoint. Afterward the cops search the apartment and discover a room filled with powered people, who are being drained of their spinal fluid. There are also many bags of psych, linking the case to a crime lord named Marcus. Later Connor visits his mother Mary at the grocery store she works at. Mary has a brain tumor, which sometimes causes her to lose control of her temperature powers. She accidentally destroys a sauce bottle and her boss yells at her, causing Connor to come in her defense and almost use his power. The boss immediately kicks them both out of his store. Later at home, Connor tells Mary to start chemo, but Mary reminds him they can't afford it. The next day, Connor sees a truck from Lincoln Power and his friend warns him they're part of Marcus gang. However Connor is desperate for money so when the driver Garrett offers work for an electric, Connor accepts. Then he's taken to a chemical plant, where Garrett asks him to disable an electric fence. Connor first tries with a bolt cutter only to receive an electric shock, so next he uses his power to overload the fence. Then Maddie melts the lock with her fire and the group finally gets inside. They start loading chemical barrels onto the truck but soon they're found by a guard, who tries to call for backup. With his telekinetic power, Garrett takes away the radio, causing the guard to surrender and swear he didn't see anything. Unfortunately when the group leaves, the police still get an alert and every officer on patrol is told to look for a red van. Garrett stops the vehicle under a bridge and the group removes the red sheet covering it, so now it looks white. When a police drone finds them, it quickly dismisses them because it's the wrong color. Afterward they make it to a garage, where Rhino takes them through a secret passageway into a club. Crime Lord Marcus is being scolded by Wesley for failing to pay lately. When Marcus tries to explain himself, Wesley tells him to read the mind of his associate Copperhead so he can see all the ways Copperhead knows how to kill someone. Then Wesley gives Marcus a week to pay and leaves. Next Garrett introduces Connor to Marcus, who reads Connor's mind and agrees he should join their team. While Nia shows Connor around, Marcus informs Garrett that he can't pay for the chemicals because he must pay Wesley first and asks about Connor's powers, but Garrett thinks Connor still needs a little training. Marcus asks him to get him ready for their next job. Meanwhile officers Park and Davis investigate the robbery and realize the chemicals were stolen to water down Marcus's psych. They can tell electric and fire powers were used on the door, so they'll have to look up a list of people with those abilities. The next day, Connor chooses Garrett again over a construction job. To test Connor's abilities, Garrett asks him to short a car's alarm, which he activates by slamming his fist on it. Connor concentrates and uses his powers to turn it off, then Garrett announces it's time to train. They start with a simple exercise, Connor must light a bulb. Because he lacks control, Connor breaks it, so he must keep practicing and breaking bulbs until he gets it right. As days pass, Connor is given some chores like collecting money from the dealers by using his powers to keep them away or force them to pay. He keeps practicing in his free time and eventually he manages to light multiple bulbs at the same time. When a dealer tries to defend himself with his own electrical bodyguard, Connor is capable of taking the shock with no pain and quickly shooting the guy down. Feeling confident, Connor decides to visit his mom's boss and threatens him into treating Mary better. Afterward he goes home and informs Mary that he's finally got a permanent job. Outside, Park and Davis watch Connor, including him in the list of suspects. The next day, Connor and Garrett go to a bank to gather information about the routine and the security cameras, concluding they'll have five minutes to pull off the heist because the police drones arrive in seven. Meanwhile Mary goes to work and is shocked by how nicely her boss is acting towards her. Sometime later, Garrett's gang storms into the bank, knocking out all the guards before holding everyone present hostage at gunpoint. Connor immediately rushes to the vault and cuts the power so the bank can't lock it remotely. The alarm goes off while they ask an employee to open the vault manually, only to discover that most of the money is already gone. The team takes whatever is left and runs outside, where the drones are already waiting with some guardians. Connor quickly hits them with his powers and makes them crash to the ground, allowing them to escape easily. Then the gang goes to see Marcus, who isn't happy to hear they couldn't get all the money. 
As he and Garrett argue, Copperhead suddenly shows up and tries to shoot Marcus, only for Rhino to block the bullets with his extremely hard body. Copperhead tries shooting Nia instead, so Connor disarms her with an electric shot. Next Copperhead attacks him with a knife and wounds his arm, thus Rhino repeatedly shoots at her until she's dead. Afterward Connor finds Nia while she's consuming Psyche. She notices Connor was wounded during the fight and immediately heals it while explaining that she keeps working for Marcus because she owes him. Later when Connor gets home, Mary asks Connor about the money he hid in his drawer, confessing she called the place Connor said he was working at, but they never heard of him there. Connor tries to explain he's chosen crime for her sake, but suddenly Mary loses control of her power and collapses. She's immediately taken to the hospital and the doctor informs Connor that her tumor is pressing her brain against the skull, but Connor can't afford the necessary operation. When Connor leaves the hospital, Park and Davis are waiting for him to take him to the station. Connor denies being involved in any crimes, so the cops remind him that Marcus is a very vicious criminal and mention they'll be burning up $4 million worth of psych soon. Park points out they can help Connor with Mary's treatment if he shares some information about Marcus, but Davis interrupts him to provoke Connor by insulting his father. Furious, Connor insists they have the wrong person and the cops have no choice but to let him go because they don't have enough evidence. Garrett picks Connor up and takes him to see Marcus, who reads Connor's mind to confirm he didn't tell the cops anything. Then Connor mentions all the psych the police will be taking to the incineration site, asking for a deal, he helps him get the psych and in return Marcus will hand over Nia to him. Garrett also asks to become a partner instead of crew, and Marcus agrees. Sometime later, the gang gets their plan ready by putting a bunch of roadblocks up. Soon the armored van shows up followed by drones, which will have to fly back when they reach the no-fly zone. The roadblocks cause the van to take a different road so Maddie and Freddy follows it in their car while Garrett drives a garbage truck to block it. As the driver yells at him and Garrett tries his best to stall, Connor charges his power up and blasts the van with a powerful shot of electricity that knocks down the Guardians. Then Garrett uses his telekinesis to keep the Guardians down so Connor can short their circuits. Freddy and Maddie soon join them and help them disable the Guardians until there's no robot left standing. Next Maddie burns a hole in the van and Freddy drops tear gas inside to make the cops get out. Because the van stops responding, the drones decide to enter the no-fly zone. Maddie takes the psych cases and hands them to Rhino, whose men begin shooting the guards. Rhino shoots Maddie as well before he and his gang turn to shoot the others, and Garrett has to move Freddy with telekinesis to save him. Then Rhino leaves with the psych, leaving two men to kill Garrett's group. At that moment more guardians arrive and the gangsters have to defend themselves from them, which allows Garrett, Freddy, and Connor to run away. Normal bullets can't hurt the guardians, who kill Rhino's guys in seconds. As the trio runs, Freddy is hit by a stray bullet and Garrett has to carry him to the car. Unfortunately Freddy doesn't make it, and while they escape, Connor blames Garrett for everything, saying Marcus betrayed them because Garrett asked for too much. Meanwhile Rhino takes the psych to Marcus, who says he can't let Nia leave because her father still owes him money. Afterward Connor visits his mom and promises he'll get her the treatment, but Mary thinks it's time for him to let go. Later Connor meets with Park at a diner to ask for the deal, promising to turn himself in but wanting the cops to get Marcus first. At the bar, Marcus starts coughing pretty badly and asks Nia to heal him. Suddenly the police shut the bar's power down and storm in to open fire on them, so Marcus escapes with Nia and Rhino through the passage that takes them to the garage. However Garrett is waiting for them and shoots Marcus in the chest. Rhino immediately fires back only for Garrett to disarm him with his telekinesis before opening fire on him. Garrett's bullets unfortunately do nothing and Rhino starts to charge after him, so Garrett uses his power to slow him down. At that moment Connor arrives and hits Rhino with an electricity blast. Rhino grabs Connor and slams him on a table, and Connor retaliates by using as much charge as possible on him, but sadly his power isn't strong enough. Then Rhino begins strangling Connor, so Garrett uses a sharp tool to stab him in the eye, allowing Connor to finally finish him with a shot of electricity through the head. Meanwhile Marcus threatens Nia as he asks her to heal him, but when Nia comes closer she takes his gun. Then Garrett uses his power to finally kill Marcus and take the gun from Nia, which he gives to Connor as he tells him to take what he wants. At that moment Nia reveals she has a wound matching Connor's from the other day, explaining her body absorbs the injuries she heals. If she cures Mary, she'll die of cancer instead. Connor ignores this and takes Nia to the hospital at gunpoint, but when Nia is about to heal Mary, Connor notices she's in pain and stops her. When Mary wakes up, Connor holds her hand and watches her die. Later Park and Davis find Marcus' body in the garage. Connor gives his van to Nia so she can escape, then he turns himself over to the cops and is sent to prison. After such a mess, the government forbids any use of powers in the city. Five years later, Tarek is in need of money to support his little sister Pavina's education. He works selling psych for Garrett and one afternoon Tarek approaches him to show he's been practicing his camouflage powers, hoping it could get him a raise. However Garrett refuses and a gang member pushes Tarek away. Afterward Garrett goes to see a presentation by Police Sergeant Kingston, who is showing the locals the latest K-9 units. Lately people have been complaining about how aggressive Guardians are and how many powers they killed 
So this is the friendly solution. The K9s will jump on a person if they see them armed, however they'll immediately back away if the person raises their hands. Pavina is also watching the presentation and her eyes glow as she looks into the robot dog. That night, Garrett sends one of his men to drop the bribe money in the usual hiding spot. Tarek follows him and after the guy is gone, he takes the money for himself. At that moment Kingston arrives, so Tarek rushes to hide while Kingston gets furious over the missing money. Kingston makes his men search the area so Tarek uses his powers to hide, but an officer still manages to notice the shape of his face and Tarek has to run away. At the same time, Pavina notices her brother hasn't come home yet and goes looking for him. The officers send a K-9 after Tarek and a desperate chase ensues. After lots of running, Tarek hides inside an abandoned building and when the K-9 gets closer, he uses his powers to pass off as a pile of fabric. Thankfully the K-9 scanner doesn't notice the difference and the robot soon goes away, allowing Tarek to escape. However when Tarek is about to get home, the K-9 finds him again. Terrified, Tarek raises his hands and the dog sits, but the cops see this through the robot's cameras and make it inject Tarek with a special poison that kills powers. Tarek wiggles in pain until he dies right as Pavina arrives to see everything. She calls out her brother's name and the dog goes after her, but when she screams, the camera goes black. In the morning at the police station, Kingston checks on the K-9 that was taken down last night, but the IT guy has no idea what happened. His only clue is the last second of the recording, which shows a young girl. Multiple officers are immediately sent out to find her. Meanwhile it's shown that Connor has gotten out of jail and been living a very boring routine as a janitor at the community center without using his powers. When he goes out to take out the trash he discovers the lock in the back shed has been broken. He checks inside and finds a terrified Pavina, who throws trash at him. Connor swears he won't hurt her and manages to get her inside, where his boss Mina comforts her and gets her to share what happened. Suddenly an officer starts knocking on the door, so Mina goes to distract him while Connor escapes with Pavina through the back door. As Mina argues with the cop and closes the door in his face, Connor and Pavina find the road blocked by more cops and take an alternate route, only to end up on a security camera. Connor takes Pavina to his apartment and they learn on the news that the cops are saying Tarek died of overdose. Pavina gets furious as she calls out the lie, causing her powers to go crazy and start affecting the television. Connor has to turn it off before something could explode. At that moment Pavina picks up radio signals and announces the cops are getting closer. Soon the officers enter the building with a K-9, only to find Connor's apartment empty. He and Pavina have been hiding in another apartment, and as soon as the coast is clear, they try to run away. Unfortunately when they make it outside, two guardians jump out of a drone and land in front of them. Connor immediately uses his electrical powers to shoot a robot down, but he hadn't done this in so long that it leaves him very weak. A voice from the drone tells them they're arrested, causing Pavina to activate her powers again and make all the drone systems fail so she can run away with Connor. Seeing no other choice, Connor meets with Garrett and asks for the favor he owes him. Connor wants a new ID, cash, and a safe place for a secret friend of his, but Garrett immediately reveals he knows everything about Pavina and what happened with the cops. He explains he has a deal with Kingston, the cops get some money from his sales, and in exchange the gang gets to operate freely. Connor is using this to keep the community safe and pay the donors properly, this way they won't be hunted down. Then Connor agrees to help with all the fake paperwork, but he also points out that Pavina must forget what she saw or the police will never leave them alone. At first Pavina refuses, but Connor explains this is their only chance to survive. Afterward the group goes to see a woman who has the power to delete people's memories. When Pavina touches her hands, the woman's eyes go black and she starts to work on Pavina's mind. At first she only deletes the memory of Tarek's death, but soon she starts moving into all other memories that involve Tarek. Pavina immediately protests because it isn't what they agreed on and Connor tries to stop the process, but the gang holds him down while it's explained that any lingering thought of Tarek could bring the others back, that's why he should be completely erased. A furious Pavina refuses to lose the memories of her beloved brother and starts fighting back against the woman's power to block her. At the same time, a gang member with flame powers tries to burn Connor, but he manages to hit the guy's arm and make him shoot at a pipe on the ceiling instead. Now there's water falling everywhere and Connor uses it as a conductor to knock the whole gang down with his electricity. Afterward Connor and Pavina go to Mina, who agrees to take them away in her car. Her license plate is found by the police drone and they get suspicious considering how she treated the cop earlier, so they send men after her. Soon Mina's car is surrounded by Garrett and his gang and when they try to take another road, the car gets stuck in a bunch of rocks under a bridge. Connor immediately uses his electrical powers to shoot a robot down, but he hadn't done this in so long that it leaves him very weak. Nearby two guardians record everything for the cops, who want this done quickly before someone else sees another case of police brutality. Garrett has orders to shoot Pavina, but Connor puts himself between them and Garrett can't bring himself to shoot him. Time runs out and the guardians open fire, quickly killing a bunch of gang members while everyone else runs to hide. Garrett receives a bullet that wounds him severely and another shot hits Mina, who just removes the bullet with her hand because her power is thick skin. A gang member tries to save one of her friends, only to get killed as well. 
Then Garrett uses his power to take a mirror from the car, but the Guardians shoot it down too. Desperate, he tells Connor they have no choice but to work together to survive. Mina agrees and tells Connor and Pavina to leave while she steps out to act as a distraction and Garrett brings up some rocks to use as a shield. Both men and Pavina run to Garrett's car and manage to escape while Mina keeps getting shot over and over until she falls. By the time Kingston arrives, Mina is still alive, thanks to her thick skin, but she doesn't have long. Kingston offers her medical attention in exchange for information, but Mina responds by spitting on his face before dying. In the evening, the trio makes it to the abandoned orphanage where Garrett grew up. Connor and Pavina hold Garrett down so he can use his powers to remove the bullet from his chest. While having a snack, Connor tells Pavina that they should head to the border, but Pavina is tired of running. The next morning they're found by Davis, who explains that bringing down Kingston is impossible because he has too much power in the force. Pavina explains she could use her ability to access the recording of all the corruption and put it on national television, she just needs one of the K-9s. Davis remembers Kingston has his own robot dog at home, so the guys make a plan to reach it. A few hours later, Garrett and Connor show up at Kingston's house pretending to be union reps from the police who want to show their support to the sergeant. Kingston's wife Stephanie doesn't know anything about her husband's shady business and gladly lets them in. When Kingston arrives, Pavina watches from the car how he leaves his K-9 in the garage. As soon as he makes it inside he can tell this is a trap, but he can't say anything in front of Stephanie and lets the guys interview him as if they were old friends. Meanwhile Pavina uses her power to open the garage door and reach the dog. As soon as she touches it, the K-9 activates and alerts the police IT guy, who tries to call Kingston to warn him. When his cell phone rings, Garrett subtly uses his powers to nudge a knife on the table, silently warning Kingston not to pick up the call. The technician tries the house phone next, so Stephanie goes to take the call while Connor pretends to go to the bathroom. As soon as they're left alone, Kingston reveals he also has telekinetic powers and tries to throw the knife at Garrett, who immediately blocks it. Both men push their powers against each other's, but since Kingston hadn't used them in a while, he lost practice and Garrett easily wins, making the knife drop. In the garage, Connor guides a very scared Pavina so she can concentrate on her powers and get what they need. Then Stephanie comes back and tells Kingston he has an urgent warning about his dog, so Garrett decides to leave while still playing nice. Afterward Kingston rushes to his garage and discovers his K-9 is gone, so he orders all his men to search for it. The trio leaves with the robot in the car and Pavina confirms she can see all the recordings. Garrett takes them to a safe apartment promising a computer they can use, however they find a bunch of gang members instead because Garrett has betrayed them again. Furious, Connor tries to attack Garrett, who brings him down first with his power. It turns out Garrett wants the information to control Kingston and keep having the leadership of the neighborhood and the psych business. Next, Garrett uses his power to tear off the dog's head and gives it to a gang member, telling him to guard it with his life. When Kingston and his men arrive, Garrett meets them outside and shows them the robot's body, threatening to release the information if his people aren't left alone. However Kingston responds by stabbing Garrett and cuffing him before sending his man and another K-9 into the building. In the apartment, the group notices that reporters are already arriving in the area and Pavina points out they can still pull off her plan, so Connor convinces the guy to give him the robot head. At that moment a K-9 unlocks the door and the cops burst in so Connor tries shooting electricity at them, but unfortunately their shields have been modified to absorb it. The officers immediately open fire, so Connor runs away with Pavina while the gang members fight back with a variety of powers, including telekinesis and flames that create a fiery barrier between them and the cops. Sadly the K-9 quickly puts the fire out and the cops attack again, causing a fierce fight to ensue. Thanks to their powers and excellent teamwork, they manage to bring down the cops one by one, however when a man with super strength tries to attack Kingston he stops him with his own power and shoots him in the head. Meanwhile Connor and Pavina make it to the corridor, where they're approached by a K-9. Connor keeps shooting electricity at it but it isn't enough to stop it, and the robot tackles him to the ground to try to inject him with the poison. A desperate Connor unleashes all his power to hit the dog, causing the power to go out as well. When the emergency lights activate, Connor sees the K-9 is frozen and thinks he's won, however the robot suddenly moves and starts injecting him. As the poison slowly goes into Connor's body, Pavina comes over and concentrates until she can take control of the robot, making it stop. Connor doesn't die but he's weak by the little poison he's received. At that moment the IT guy appears in the elevator with another K-9, so Pavina sends the first one out to fight, easily destroying the new arrival in a quick move. Terrified, the cop opens fire, but bullets do nothing and the K-9 tackles him to the floor, cutting his fingers to disarm him. When Connor finally stands up, he discovers a stray bullet has hit Pavina and she's heavily bleeding. While more cops enter the apartment and manage to overpower the gang members, Connor picks up Pavina and takes her outside, but he's too weak to keep going and puts the girl down on the ground. At that moment they see the reporters nearby and Connor asks them to come closer. The police try to send another K-9 after him, however Garrett uses his telekinesis to fold it into a useless metal ball. Suddenly Davis finally arrives and makes all the cops step back, allowing the reporters to reach the duo. With her last energy, 
Pavina touches both the robot head and the camera to transmit Kingston's corruption to the whole country. At home, Stephanie is devastated to see the truth about her husband. Kingston comes out of the building and tries to shoot Pavina, however Garrett controls his hand and keeps him at gunpoint, giving Davis time to approach Kingston and arrest him. With their goal achieved, Connor and Pavina pass out. Three months later, Kingston is being investigated and the reporters start to follow the trail of corruption into higher positions. Garrett is in jail and watches the news with satisfaction. Connor returns to his janitor job and opens the youth center for all the children in the neighborhood, including a recovered Pavina who thanks him for everything. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.